and celebrate and give thanks to God for everything that he's done and how he's met our needs through the week and how he's going to meet our needs through this week. So we celebrate that this morning in a, in a very joyful way. I was trying to think of the word, joyful way. So we welcome you this morning. We welcome those ones that are watching us. And so we just come to praise God. Hey, in the way of announcements, um, things taking place not only just um, this week, but also next, um, next Sunday, some events. Um, Tuesday night is council meeting. Uh, commission meetings are for that, so keep them in your prayers. Keep the leadership in your prayers as we start to move forward with some things, okay? On other announcements, a walk in the spirit occurs every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Um, you're welcome to join us on Facebook or on YouTube. And prayer requests, you can send through the, the website, okay? I'm in a blank memory here this morning. Hey, next Sunday is a big Sunday. It's Love Your Neighbor Sunday, okay? We won't be having 1030 service, okay? Um, we have Donut Sunday, okay? So we're going to, I told everybody, going to sugar you up, and we're going to send you out into the community, okay? So what we're going to do at 1030, we're going to meet in the Fellowship Hall. The communities have been divided up in sections. Um, there are leaders for those sections, and we'll see how many people we have, and we'll, we'll go from there. But we're going to... We're going to do, do some backpack, backpacks, you know that. So Saturday at noon, what we're going to do, if you'd like to help, you can gather in the fellowship hall at noon. The guys are selling hoagies, um, set, making hoagies Saturday morning and selling them in Scottsdale on Saturday. It'll be done about 11.30 probably. Usually we are. But we're going to meet here at 12. We're going to put a loaf of bread. We're going to New Testament Bible. We're going to put a daily bread. Um, we're going to put some cookies. That's where you come in at. Remember I said last week, um, if you'd like to make some cookies or donate some cookies, we'd appreciate that. You can drop them off at the church either Friday afternoon after 12, or you can drop them off Saturday morning. The church will be unlocked, okay? And the kitchen door will be unlocked. So that's next Sunday at 1030. Now, you may say, you know, I can't do that. I can't walk that well. Some place we're going to drive, some place we're going to be able to walk local right here. Um, if you can't do that, you can come to House of Worship. We're going to have music playing, and you can pray, prayer, because what the key thing is, we need prayer. We need people to pray for this, pray for the ones who are doing it, and also pray for the community, okay? But that's next Sunday morning, okay? Next Sunday morning. Um, we have baptism coming up, too, okay? Baptism is August the 21st. Um, if you'd like to be baptized, um, please see me, but that will be in both services, okay? Whatever service you come to. That'll be the baptism service, but it's August the 21st, okay? Um, any other announcements? Let's worship God this morning. Well, good morning, church. <laughs> hey, we are going to have church next Sunday, but it's going to be, we're going to be the church. Amen. And, and next week's about that second greatest commandment, to love thy neighbor. But today, right now, this time, is about that first great one, to love our God our hearts, souls, and minds. So let's stand and do that as we have the call to worship. The call to worship is from Psalm 62, and please repeat it with me. It says, My soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. Let's sing hymn 71, Behold What Men Are Love. Let's do it twice. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given Thank you. 
Father, I'm not sure this morning if, if we can even behold, if we can even take into all consideration how much you love us, Father, or why that you love us sometimes, Father. But your book says that you do, and we know that you do love us. And we're so thankful, Lord, that you brought us into your house today, that we might reflect that love, not just those rounds, but back to you, Father, as, as we lift up your name, as we worship you, as we praise you. Father, we just pray, pray that all the, all, everything here, everything that's done today, glorify you, that everything be used to magnify your name, Father. We're so thankful for those who have come to, to, to congregate, Lord, and, and, and to take part in this worship service, Father. We just pray that they are encouraged. We pray that they are equipped. And, Father, we just pray that, you know, you, you just bless them. For those that couldn't be here, Father, for whatever reason, we just ask a blessing upon them that, you know, again, that you reveal yourself unto them, that they know that you are who you say you are. You are the, the great promise keeper, Father. And, Lord, we stand on those promises. We stand on the promises you've made for us, Father. Father, we thank you for all the things you do for us. I ask your anointing on, on the pastor today as he brings the message. I ask for your anointing on, on, on the music today, Lord, again, that it glorifies you and, and brings praise unto you. Father, we thank you for all you do for us, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, any kids here? Any kids? Come on. Okay. I got one. I got Lucy. I got Parker. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good? What is it? That's the exact same thing that they said in the first service. Let's see what it really is. It's a kini. It's a kini. Look. <laughs> you don't like, do you? You don't like them? Why? You just don't like them. Yeah. You don't like them. Yeah. Well, it's zucchini. Okay. I love zucchinis. Okay, fried, ooh, they're the best. So yeah. <clears throat> well, you know to get a zucchini, zucchini plant or a cucumber plant, if I just take this and throw it in the ground, would it grow? No. no. What has to happen? Seed. You gotta have seed. You gotta get a zucchini plant or a seed, put it in the ground and water and put sun on it and cultivate it. Then after a period of time, what happens? It grows. It grows, yeah, it grows, doesn't it? Yeah, it grows. Okay, so if I go out, and this one's already taken off, and I take this off, and I put it, and I lay it on the table or on the floor, and don't do anything with it, don't eat it, what happens to that zucchini? It rots. It gets moldy? Yeah, it does. Sure, you get sick. It rots, and he says, it, it, she said it rots, he said it gets moldy, and you can't, you get sick if you eat it, huh? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You're right. Well, you know, the same thing happens to us, okay? We have God's Word, we take our life, we plant in God's Word, and we, and, we, and we grow. But if we cut ourselves off from God's Word or God, what happens to us? We get the same way as this, Right? We get moldy. As he said, we, you get moldy and you just stink. That's the only point. You just stink, okay? You get moldy and you shrivel up. But the same thing happens, okay? We need God in our life because we're part of the vine and we don't want to cut our way from the vine so, because we're supposed to abide in the Lord always, okay? Abide in the Lord. And what's that mean? We're with God, okay? So just like zucchini, when you cut this off, you've got to take it and eat it. Or if you don't, it's going to rot, Okay, the same way with God. If we, if we cut ourselves off from God, we're going to rot too. We're not going to be a very good person. Okay, so just remember that. You always have to be connected to the vine, always connected to God in every way. Okay, so let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that we're all a part of the vine, dear Lord. Father, nurture us, strengthen us, and encourage us in a very special way. And Father, we thank you for that. And Father, we ask everything in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can get your lollipop or wherever you want to go. Okay? Then you think, well, you never know, then. Handfuls, you know. Yeah. Go ahead.
He had good answers. He gets to take two for that. Yeah. Hey, as we, as we come to the part um, in our, in our worship service, we pray, um, lift concerns and, and praises. We'd ask you to remember Nick. Um, we visited Nick on Friday. He's doing okay, but Nick right now is in hospice, okay, just to take care of him and just to make his medicines are okay and just everything. So keep Kathy and Nick in your prayers, okay? Continue to pray for them. Um, there's a lot of people traveling. They've traveled last week. Some are leaving this afternoon and some are leaving tomorrow morning. So just um, we would ask that you pray for them, give them traveling mercies as they'll, they'll be traveling the next week and they'll be coming home today, okay? Other prayer requests or praise this one. Um, keep Betty and, and um, Wayne in your prayers. Um, continue to pray for them. It's good to see Betty this morning. Others this morning. So. Her uncle, Angelo. Okay. Okay. All right. Others this morning? Unspoken? Uh, yeah, okay. Wait a minute, I'll get yours in a minute. Unspoken? Okay. Go ahead, Kobe. Just tell us about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kobe's also got some friends that are, Kobe has friends. <laughs> I, say, I have to say that, I have to say that. But he has some friends that are in some very, a very dark place right now. And they desperate, desperately need to know Jesus as their Savior in that. So keep them in your prayers too. Any others? Praises? Do you have a good week? Beautiful weather. Beautiful weather, yeah. It's a good week. It's been a good week, so it has. Hey, we're going to sing the first verse of In the Garden. Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything you have done for us over the last week, dear Lord, and how you protected us, how you sustained us, how you looked after us, and how you provided for us. And Father, we're so thankful for that. And Father, as we come before you this morning, we come before you in that form of humility, and we ask your blessings upon us, dear Lord, that Father, in the name of Jesus, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be here this morning to mold and shape this service into what you want to be, not what man wants to be. And Father, as we come before you this morning, we come before you with concerns that were laid upon our hearts. And Father, we ask in your precious name that you consider each and every one of them. Father, remember Nick and Kathy. And Father, we just ask your blessings upon them. Just enrich their life. Let them know this morning as we're lifting them up in prayer that we love them and we're praying for them in a tremendous way. Let them feel the touch of the Master's hand just in that room that they're in right now, dear Lord. Father, just look after them in a very special way. 
Father, we continue to pray for, for Betty and Wayne. Look after them and be with them and help them, dear Lord. We pray for Buck, who's going to have a stress test this coming Tuesday, dear Lord. And, and for just, he can try to get this AFib under control that he's been dealing with for over a year now, dear Lord. Father, just look after him and Linda in a very special way, way unique way. Be with those ones that have been traveling over the last week or coming home this weekend. And be with those ones that are leaving this afternoon and, and leaving tomorrow morning, dear Lord. Father, just look after them. Look after them. Give them safe passage. Let them find rest, dear Lord, as they're away. But, Father, bring them back into our midst in a safe way. Father, we pray for Kobe's friends, the ones that are in a dark, very dark place right now. We would ask in your precious name that the, the anointing of the Spirit of God, the true living God, no matter where they're at this morning, could come across them. And Father, that the, that Spirit could start tugging on the heartstrings, dear Lord. And Father, they could realize that they need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that they need their heart cultivated, their mind cultivated, and their life cultivated, dear Lord, within the Word of God and with a very special blessing upon them. Bless them and be with them and touch them. Father, we pray for next Sunday as we, as we go out into the community. And Father, as we represent you, as we, take the, as we take these walls and we expand them, and as we bless this community, Father, we pray in your precious name that there's a covering that happens over top of this community. Bless it and be with it and just touch it in a very special, very unique way, dear Lord. And Father, we thank you. Father, we pray for the other ones that aren't feeling well today, dear Lord, and ones in the beds of affliction. We lift them before you, and we put them into the nail-scarred hands of Christ. But, Father, we also pray for those ones that aren't here this morning, maybe because they just don't care. They don't care about their relationship, dear Lord. Or maybe they don't have time for you this morning. And, Father, we pray in the precious name of Christ, in the name above all other names, Father, that you reach down from heaven. And, Father, you just touch their life in a very special way. And let them realize that they need to worship you, that they have fellowship with you. They need to have fellowship with other believers to find strength and encouragement. For, Father, we wonder why this world isn't going the right way. And we can look all around this world, we can look all around this nation and see our church is half empty, dear Lord. And, Father, we just ask your blessings upon them. Bless them and be with them and touch them. Father, we ask your blessings upon the offering this morning, dear Lord. Father, that it is used to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That it is used to help more people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. To make more disciples for the kingdom of God. And Father, we also ask your blessings upon the giver this morning. A very special blessing upon them. For when we give, we give from the heart alone. We give out of gratitude that you have graciously given to us, dear Lord. And Father, let it be used to glorify your name and to build your kingdom up. But Father, we also pray if there's one here this morning who doesn't know you as a personal Savior, we pray in that name. We pray that you tug on their heartstrings and that they can find you within their life. We pray for our nation. We pray for the community. We pray for the world around us, dear Lord. And Father, we ask your blessings upon them. We pray for the special music this morning, dear Lord. Bless it and be with it. Father, we pray for the message this morning, dear Lord that the messenger takes nothing upon himself, but he gives the glory and the praise and the honor to you. And this messenger humbles himself before you this morning in the form of humility. And Father, we thank you. The Father, just be with us. Bless us and be with us, Father, in a very special way. And Father, we thank you. And Father, the things that we ask, we ask in a name that is above all other names. That is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. The Ministry of Music. on mic there it is um this is not performance we're here to sing for god we're gonna talk about sing about the goodness of god and the words are going to be up there so you feel free to sing about your own goodness if you want
about God's goodness for you, not your goodness. <laughs> I'll get it right yet. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god and all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me.
the goodness, the goodness of God in every way. I want you to sing this little song with me. This light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That means some, let me ask you something about your light. Is it shining? You know, we live, we live in a dark world, a very dark world. And this world seems to begin darker and darker as the years go by. And we know someday the eastern skies are going to be split and Christ is coming back, and it's not going to be dark anymore. We do know that. And we all, we all look for that day. So we do. But till that day comes, our light is supposed to shine. But how does your light shine within this darkened world? only shines by grace, the grace of God. And having that personal relationship in Jesus Christ, knowing him, living your life, powering your life, and cultivating your life with the word of God. Amen? Amen. This morning I want to look at grace a little bit. Okay? Spurgeon said this. In all of grace, Spurgeon wrote this. Spurgeon lays out a touch of the gospel. The salvation is all. And the only way, the only, the only available way, I should read that again, and only available by the grace of God, it is nothing that we deserve or can earn. It is nothing that we can win or find. The only way to receive it is, is to have it given to you. Have it given to you. Grace. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians 15. And I'm going to read chapter 15, verse 12 verses of that, of that chapter. And we're going to talk a little about the grace of God in every way. You know what? While you're turning there, I'll give you, I'll give you a little scenario, a little thing. You know, John Newton felt as deeply about the wonder, the wonder of God's grace as he did than anyone else. He once explained that the crowds who attend his service that evening on all the evenings that he preached, came not to hear him preach, but with a courageous of people who wished to see the lions tamed in the circus. They came to behold the trophic of the grace of God and who God was. Paul was also a trophy of God's grace. God's grace saved his soul, disciplined his mind, enriched his life, empowered his ministry, and sustained him to the very end. Thus we could say this, as Paul did, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I am what I am. Every Christian can, can, and must say this. What has God's grace done for us? What has God's grace done for us? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 12, it says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also we receive, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for I delivered you, I delivered to you, as of first importance, what I, of what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cleopas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain unto now. But some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and to all the apostles, and the least of them, As to the one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles. I am not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
Listen to verse 10. He says this, By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to, toward me did not prove vain. But I labor even more than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God within me, with, with me, rather than it was, or I, or they. So we preached, and so you believe. Now if Christ has preached that he's been risen from the dead, how do some among you say that there was no resurrection of the dead? Oh, in verse 13. But there was no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. 14. And if Christ has been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Our faith is in vain. Moreover, we are, we are even found to be false witness of God because we testify against God. And he raised Christ, whom he did not, whom he did not raise. If, I, if, if in fact the dead are not raised... For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless, and, and, you, still, and you are still in your sins. And those who have fallen asleep in Christ have, have persecuted. If you have hope in Christ, purchase to say, hope in Christ in your life only, we are of all men most. Wow. The grace of God. What is grace? What's grace to you? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. What else? Acceptance. Acceptance. What else? Forgiveness time after time after time. What else? Escape Love. Escape from God's wrath because of our sins. So he said, okay. All right. We are saved by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Christianity was initiated solely by God's grace. By God's grace. He first loved us. He sent his son into the world to be our substitute on the cross. For by grace, we are saved, my friends. My friends, we did not deserve to be saved. Do you realize that? We didn't deserve to be saved at all. What we deserved will be quite different in this world around us. We cannot secure salvation for ourselves. People were not set, saved by works in the Old Testament, as some may believe, but by the grace in the new. God has always dealt with his people graciously, hasn't he? Always dealt with his people graciously. Amos urged his people to repent and walk in the right way with hope that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to them. You can read about that in Amos 5. For Amos, salvation was by grace alone. By grace alone. Paul's testimony was this. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And, we, when, and when we think of what he was, he was a blasphemer. He was a persecutor. He was a destroyer of the church. And when we think of what he became, the apostle to the Gentiles, the missionary, the statesman, the founder of the church, the soul winner, and the Christian martyr. We are bound to ask, my friends, what made the difference? And there can only be but an answer, and that is the saving grace of God himself. First of all, we are saved by grace. Secondly, we are disciplined by the grace of God. The word discipline and disciple come from the same root word. The same root word. There could be no discipleship without discipline in our life. We cannot be saved by discipline, but our salvation cannot be effective unless we are disciplined within our lives. Now, I said all that, and I have to say this. There is no conflict between grace and discipline. You have to realize that. There's no conflict between grace and discipline. Hey, take your Bibles and turn to Titus. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. 
Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. If you can't find Titus, just go to Timothy. It's before the big book of the um, Philemon. If you can find Philemon, you can find anything in the scriptures, right? But Titus, Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. It says this, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly righteousness and godly in the present age. In the present age. What was Paul saying? What was Paul saying? Paul was saying God's grace saves us. God's grace teaches us, on the one hand, to renounce, on the other hand, to, to realize or to recognize. A truly disciplined Christian emerges by the grace of God. Hear what I said? A truly disciplined Christian emerges by the grace of God. So you have so you're saved by grace. You have a discipline by the grace of God. My friends, the next thing is our lives are enriched. You know what I said now? Our lives are enriched by the grace of God. Paul put it this way. Again, take those Bibles. Take those Bibles and turn to um, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Chapter 8, just one verse, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Paul told, Paul told this to the church of Corinth, and he, and he says this in that ninth verse of the 8th chapter. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he was rich, yet, yet, for our sake, he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Hear what it said? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor so that through his poverty might become rich. My friends, it will. It will make them fully God's grace. I should say this way. God's grace will enrich your lives. It will make them full, rich, and free. Free of what? Free of sin. Through the grace of God. Paul raises a question. He raises a question that, that is devastating to our pride. To our pride. He says this in, in 1 Corinthians. For you see anything different in you? Anything different in you? What have you that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? If it were not a gift. What's the scripture say? Pride goeth before what? A fall. Let me share something. I'll be very honest with you. There's too much pride in the church. You know what I said? There's too much pride in the church. We have to have some pride. I do realize that. Okay? But when that pride gets in the way of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when that pride gets in the way of another Christian, I know more than you know, and other things, my friends, that is pride goes before a fall. My friends, we come before him in humility to live our lives, to pattern our lives. That you and I are only saved by grace. Hey, if, if, if Jesus had pride, he wouldn't have got on that cross. Do you realize that? That cross is a form of humility before the whole world. That you can have the saving grace of God. The saving grace of God. There are two way, there's a two-way street. Okay, two-way street. If we take God's gift with a willing hand, if we take God's gift as a willing hand, we belong forever to the giver. Hear what I said? We belong forever to the giver. But God's grace, listen to this now, God's grace is not cheap. Do you hear that? 
It's not cheap. It is not cheap. It cost him his life. It is a very expensive gift. For if we receive that gift, we belong to the giver. We belong to the giver. He will bind our hearts with something. And what he binds our hearts with, he binds his hearts with a cord of love. Would we want anything else? No, we wouldn't. So we see where, where God's grace enriches our life. But also, we can see within there that God's grace empowers us. We are empowered by the grace of God. Remember Paul? Paul told the, the, the Corinthian church, you know, Paul had, remember Paul? You know Paul? Now, let me tell you something. If I was in, if I was in our, our, our African-American churches somewhere, if I mentioned the word of Paul, someone in the back would stand up and say, tell us about Paul this morning, okay? Let me tell you something about Paul this morning. I'll say, so, I'll say that. Tell me about Paul this morning. Remember Paul? Paul had a thorn in his side, didn't he? Am I right? Okay. Thank you, Kobe. He had, a, he had a thorn in his side, didn't he? And he prayed. He said it was a message from Satan. And he prayed one time for God to remove that thorn. Oh, three times. See, someone's awake out there. Someone's awake. He prayed three times to have that thorn remain from his side. And, and God said, okay. He said, no. See, you got the story right. God said, no. Then what does Paul say? Say it so. Your grace is sufficient. Paul realized that. Your grace is sufficient. It says, my grace is sufficient for thee, in some versions, for my strength is made perfect in what? Weakness. In weakness. Our, far, our forefathers would call that enabling grace. Here I said, enabling grace. Robert Louis Stevenson, the great writer, tells a story of Ebel Tide. And one of the characters cries this out. Everything grace, everything grace, we walk upon it. We breathe it. We live it and die by it. And he says this as that as statement goes on. Make the nails in the axis of this universe Grace. There was another thing that grace does to us. You know, grace sustains us. Sustains us. Not only does God give us strength each and every day, but His grace sustains us in every trial of our lives, every pitfall of our lives. He keeps us from falling. You know, some people have an, a different concept of salvation. You know, they realize that we are, we are saved by grace, and they see that. But they have an idea that, that salvation received by God, by, I should say this way, but they have an idea that, that salvation received by grace, God's great gift, that we cannot, we can never deserve it and can be lost by our own poor works or failures in this world. They seem to think that, that God saves us, that God saved me and you by his grace and then removes his hands and leaves us to hold on if we can. My friends, of course, we are no more able to keep ourselves saved than we are able to save ourselves in the first place. It takes God's wonderful grace to save us from our sins. It takes a wonderful grace to keep us out of Satan's clutches each and every day of our life. By God's grace, he saves us. By grace, he keeps us from falling each and every day. Now take your Bibles and turn over to one more passage here I'm going to share with you this morning. I want to share um, John. 
I want to share John chapter 10, verses 27 and 29. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'll give you a second to get there. John chapter 10, verses 27 and 29. Unless you have a phone. This is what it says. It's starting 27th verse. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I, and I give eternal life to them, and they do not perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hands. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the, out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. That is the grace of God. For his grace sustains us at all times, under all circumstances. He keeps us safe and protects us. There was a, there was a prisoner in um, Nazi German, American soldier in World War II. While he was a prisoner, he wrote this to his friend. In the older days, I used to be a bearer of the gospel. Now, that gospel is bearing me. Now, that, go that gospel is bearing me. The gospel of Jesus Christ, because we're saved by grace, holds us up, my friends. It sustains us. It looks after us. We are saved. We are disciplined. We are enriched. We are empowered and sustained by the grace of God in every way. But you may be saying this morning, or maybe watching this morning, I don't know, maybe saying this morning, well, how do I get that grace? I want to show you how you get that grace. You begin by doing this and humbling yourself before the King of kings and the Lord of lords and saying, I can't do this by myself. I need you, Jesus, to come into my life and the saving power and the grace will enter your life and you'll experience something. My friends, there are two forms of living in this world. There is legalism and there is, there is love. A person who is a legalist, they, they, they believe and they do things, but they don't do the things, the right things for the kingdom of God. Basically, they do things for themselves. And when something happens and you come into that relationship, especially, I, I'm telling you this because a, a person this week came from legalism into this. They experienced something over here they never experienced before. And what they experienced over here, they experienced the love of Jesus Christ. And once you experience the love of Jesus Christ, there are two things that you have to do. To love your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself. See, a lot of times that doesn't happen over here, this person says. Because there's new meaning over here with love and understanding. For Christ is number one in your life. It's the first in your life. Everything that you do is done for Jesus Christ out of love, out of devotion, out of discipleship for him. That you realize, you realize something, that you are saved by grace. Saved by grace. That's grace. That's the understanding of grace. That Jesus Christ died for us. That we may have that saving grace. So here's the question. Do you know that? Do you, have you experienced that love? For if we experience that love, there's nothing that will hold us back. And if the church of Jesus Christ experience that love, you will not see our churches half empty because they have new meaning within their life. A brand new meaning in their life. And that new meaning is Christ and Christ alone in every way. For he is number one in your life, no matter what you're doing in this world. Hey, this morning in closing, we're going to sing that great old hymn of the church, Amazing Grace. And this morning, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, remember it always, be, always begins in your knees to know what that saving grace feels like, to experience something you've never experienced before. 
His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Christ. Some people say, you know, I'll wait. Don't wait. Because you may wait too long, and today may be it. Next 30 seconds might be it. You may not have another chance. Don't play the games the world wants you to play. Don't play them. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let us stand and let us sing Amazing Grace. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us, dear Lord. And Father, as we go into the world, dear Lord, Father, let us represent not ourselves anywhere within this world, but let us represent you in everything that we do and everything that we say because of who you are and what you've done in our life. And Father, we thank you. And Father, we ask everything in your name. Amen and amen. Pastor Lee Klein from the Center of the Church of God. I have a question to ask you. How many times do you walk across the threshold of a door? You walk across the threshold of your home, a school, a store, and even the church. On August 7th at 10.30 in the morning, we're going to cross over this threshold. 
we're going to go into the community. Now, you may be asking, well, what are you going to do in the community? Well, we're going to take these bags and we're going to put a loaf of bread, a bottle of water, a New Testament Bible, a daily bread, some comment cards, and maybe some other things in here, and we're going to give them out in the community. Now, you may be asking, well, why are you doing this? Two reasons. First of all, we want to cross the threshold and expand the church walls. The second thing is, we want to be a blessing to other people within the world. So what's going to happen? On that Sunday, we are going to have 8 o'clock service, followed by Sunday school. And at 10.30, we're going to meet in the fellowship hall. We're going to divide up in groups. We have the coordinators all picked out. We have everything, the map of Elverton all mapped out. And we're going to leave here at 10.30, and we're going to go into the community to, just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to present this bag. If they're not home, we're going to put it on the on their porch. If we get a chance to talk to them, we're going to talk to someone. But to make something clear, this is not a recruiting thing. We just want to bless this community. We want to bless people. And we want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For you know, that's what God tells us to do. To share the gospel in every way. And we can share that with this community and go on to the next community. But on August 7th at 10.30 in the morning, we're going to do that. Now, you may be saying, I can't do that, but I can be here. Well, we invite you to come to the worship center and just have a time of prayer. To pray for the people who are going out and to pray for the community. For we like to blanket this community with prayer in a tremendous way. So if you'd like to join us, you're welcome to come. That's August 7th at 10.30 on a Sunday morning. God bless.